As I stated in a previous comic book bracket feud, the first wave of MCU films didn't impress me that much. You know what, now that I think about it, I don't know if I actually said that, but I refuse to go back and look. Let's just roll with it. But here we are, phase two MCU, and things got a whole lot better. I'm not going to do the big ensemble pictures. I'm saving that for a future episode. So what we're getting today, we're getting Iron Man 3, Ant-Man, Captain America Winter Soldier, and one other film I can't think of right now, Thor 2. On movie, let's not drag this any longer. That's it's exactly movie. what I was thinking. Okay, I'm trying to wrap this up. Why can't you just leave me alone? Oh, oh I think you know why. As predicted, quite surprisingly actually, X-Men Origins Wolverine won the first phase of the comic book bracket and is moving on. It was a cheap joke by my viewers. It's over now. It's not going to go any further on in the bracket. If you do another episode after this, you're going to start a civil war between your fans and yourself. A war you can't possibly win. And this just got retarded. We're well past that. I'm you from an even further future, and it gets really bad. I'm not letting this drag on any longer. Let's start the intro here on Movie Feuds. Once again here, the cast is excellent. I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time talking about Iron Man and Thor because I've already spoken my mind about them in prior episodes. Once again, I don't know if I did, but I'm not going to go back and check. It's just awful sounding. I will say this, Captain America the Winter Soldier really blew me away about that character. Making the Winter Soldier such a personal story for Steve Rogers showed just how interesting and badass Cap really is. Chris Evans was phenomenal this time around, really owning the role. And the side characters were oh so juicy. I need to stop having Jay write these scripts. My blushing bride ScarJo looks gorgeous with her straight hair and Robert Redford doesn't look like he's aged a day. Ant-Man also rocks a pretty awesome cast featuring Paul Rudd as our main hero, Michael Douglas, Michael Pena, and Evangeline Lilly. Iron Man 3 continues the trend from the first two movies, bringing in powerhouse actors like Ben Kingsley and Guy Pearce. I know Kingsley's Mandarin rubbed a lot of dicks the wrong way, but I found him quite enjoyable. The main villain of Thor 2 just doesn't have presence, and he's overshadowed by Loki at every turn. You can say the same thing for Ant-Man. Captain America definitely wins this round due to the badassness of Winter Soldier. While he doesn't show up often, you know he's always there lingering right around the corner, waiting for his chance to strike. He's the Bill Cosby of the MCU. And I don't think there's any arguing that Winter Soldier utilizes him best. Especially Scar jo, with that long, beautiful hair flowing through the wind, running with her little guns and her items and her weapons. I'm gonna marry her someday! What really made these movies good this go around is that there was such a personal story attached. Giving the characters defining characteristics like Tony's PTSD, Cap's living in the present and making friends, Ant-Man trying to get his life back together, and Thor evolving even more since we saw him in the first couple films. Director Shane Black, while making some controversial decisions that didn't really bother me since I'm not a little bitch, still managed to craft a really fun comedy action romp, putting our hero front and center. Thor 2, while very run-of-the-mill, still was a blast since we got to do more on Asgard this time around. Solid epic battles and putting Thor and Loki together to go kick some elf ass was good fun. What I love about Cab 2 is the political edge. It raises questions about our nation's security while also being action-packed. Ant-Man goes for a heist feel, which is also a nice change of pace. It's a smaller scale movie than the- God damn it, I just did an overused lame Ant-Man pun. Honestly, really short-sighted of me. And I have barely any credibility on this channel, just a tiny, minuscule amount. So, every time I do one of these lame puns, my viewers go down in size. They shrink. Big time. Is that enough puns? I think that's enough. None of the effects are bad this time around. They all look really slick, just like a blockbuster should post-2010. I also enjoyed seeing some practical effects in Winter Soldier. There's plenty of CGI, but there's also a good amount of car chases and fight scenes using the old-fashioned methods. The fights look great, with the brawl between Cap and the Winter Soldier being the big highlight of the flick. All the big moments look excellent across the board, and what I really liked about Iron Man 3 is we got to see Tony Stark kick some ass without his full Iron Man suit. He had to be resourceful, and that's what ultimately proved there is more to this hero than just his suits. The Ant-Man shrinking effect looked really cool, so I hope when Hollywood inevitably remakes Honey, I Shrunk the Kids with an all-female cast for cash-grabbing purposes, 
they use the same team. Just a lot of creativity this time, blending humor, personality, and sometimes intensity to each sequence. Composer Brian Tyler does the score for Iron Man 3 and Thor 2, and while they sound great in the movie and are grand and epic, they're not going to be remembered like Back to the Future, Superman, Jaws, etc. It doesn't help that in each Captain America movie we get a completely new score. Kinda chaps my ass, really. We can't get a consistent theme here. Practical effects went out for me. It brings me further into the picture with those car chases, the chase sequences on foot, hand-to-hand -hand combat, Scarlett Johansson, once again, that long, fiery, fierce red hair running down her mane. It's just gorgeous. Wait, mane is hair, so it can't be running down hair. Running down her back. Moving on! This was a positive feud, guys. I thought this was fun. Unlike the majority, I don't care so much about Iron Man 3 messing with its villain or Thor 2 being too generic. But I'm also not an avid comic book reader, and by avid I mean I don't read comics. So if you have a gripe with these for changing stuff, I, c I get it. You know what? More power to you. Show that passion. Bring it forth. If I had to pick one from this bunch, I would go with Winter Soldier. I feel that it's one of the best Marvel movies to date. But hey, it's your vote that counts. So let me know which Phase 2 movie you think is the best. And remember, this is more than just reviews. This is movie nice feuds. going Jesus on the feud today, Christ. Adam. I'm with you all the way on this bracket thing. Keep pushing on, man. You're doing great. What version of me are you? I'm you from yesterday. A past Adam. Yeah. Pat him. You have a lot of nerve showing your face here, Padam, as beautiful as it is. Back off, asshole. Do I not own other clothes? I mean, did you guys call each other and decide what you're gonna wear today to punk me? I, I don't understand. When did I master time travel and why would I use it for such a dumb fucking purpose? No, 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 none of this adds up at all. Let's just close this out with a Hail Hydra and the knowledge that this is the last comic book feud. It's not, but I'll bite. Hail, Hail Hydra. Hydra.